Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. At the time of its launch in 1912, the Titanic was the largest ship afloat and the very picture of elegance. It was a full 882 feet long, 92 feet wide at its thickest point, and 104 feet from the top of the bridge to the keel. The British ocean liner was so large that it included a gymnasium, swimming pool, over 370 first-class cabins, and multiple restaurants that the passengers could enjoy. Yet, despite all of these impressive measurements, the Titanic is dwarfed by most modern cruise ships. The Symphony of the Seas, Royal Caribbean's premier cruise liner and the largest cruise ship ever constructed, is actually a full five times the size of the Titanic. She is 1,184 feet long and 229 feet from the keel to the highest point. Where the Titanic weighed around 46,000 tons, the Symphony of the Seas weighed 228,000. Most impressive of all, however, is the cruise liner's startling capacity, which stands at 6,690 passengers and 2,200 crew members. When fully loaded, the Titanic only boasted space for 2,453 passengers and 885 crew at best. The Symphony of the Seas was designed as a floating city. Inside and out, passengers will find 24 bars and lounges. nine hot tubs, several spas, and 18 restaurants. There is also a 10-story high water slide, a 40-foot surfing simulator, an ice skating rink, and a laser tag arena. One thing both cruise ships and ocean liners have in common is a massive range. Indeed, the Titanic was crossing the Atlantic Ocean when she struck an iceberg off Newfoundland. However, many modern cruise ships can recreate the transatlantic journey with almost identical travel times. Another significant change from the Titanic's era is the type of fuel used to operate the vessels. For instance, the Titanic ran on coal, consuming some 825 tons per day. Most modern cruise ships run on diesel engines and typically consume up to 250 tons every 24 hours, or around 80,000 gallons. However, since the fuel tanks on the ships can hold 4 million gallons of fuel or more, they can travel up to 50 days without having to enter the port. When they do need to be replenished, cruise ships will typically dock with a refueling barge, which will connect a series of hoses to pump fuel into the cruise ship's tank. The construction process of a modern cruise ship is one of the most impressive feats of engineering in the world. It is done using powerful cranes at specially equipped shipyards like Chantier de l'Atlantique in western France.
The construction can take years and consists of modular steel sections being lifted and welded into place piece by piece. This is all done in a dry dock, which can be flooded and drained as needed to test the ship's capabilities. When construction is complete, the dock will be flooded one last time so that the ship can be officially launched. The process of launching a cruise liner is one of the most impressive events one can witness. After being towed out of the dry dock by one or more tugboats, the ship is slowly maneuvered out to sea. Due to the sheer size of the vessel, this procedure usually includes guiding the cruise liner down small canals and waterways, through bridges, and around shallow sections. Depending on the shipyard, it can take multiple days to reach the sea. Once out in the sea, help may be thousands of miles away should the ship run into trouble. For that reason, modern cruise ships boast a variety of impressive safety features, including thousands of smoke detectors and fire extinguishers, as well as five separate firefighting teams. Lastly, all cruise ships will perform multiple drills to make sure both crew and passengers are up to snuff on the rescue and abandoned ship procedures. Perhaps the most important development in ship safety is the invention of the free fall lifeboat. <laughs> they are typically positioned parallel to the cruise ship's hull, where they can be loaded and slowly lowered into the water in mere minutes. In other cases, they will point out towards the sea and be launched into the water bow first. Either way, the boats are fully equipped to take evacuating passengers and crew members to safety in the rare event that something goes wrong. Interestingly enough, it's not just the ships that have seen major technological improvements since the Titanic's days. The ports are modernizing at a rapid rate as well. The most significant example of this is port electrification. This means eschewing fuel-powered equipment in exchange for those powered by cleaner, greener energy. This is not only going to reduce pollution in the port area, but significantly reduce the carbon emissions of the entire shipping industry. In the near future, ports also hope to provide a service known as shoreside power. This would allow ships to turn off their engines, plug into an electrical grid, and power themselves while at berth. This would help reduce emissions from large vessels like crews and cargo ships, which would otherwise need to burn traditional fuel to keep the boat powered in port. It's a small step, but it's one that dockside fishing companies and property owners are sure to appreciate.
that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.